In this video, you learn how to find a counterexample in a true-false question. Here is the exercise. Let A be a matrix that is not equal to the null matrix. You multiply this matrix A with a matrix B and also with a matrix C. Now suppose the results of these multiplications are the same. Does this mean that B and C have to be the same matrix? Let's use the technique called KISS, introduced to you before, to answer this question. What do you know? Your first thought probably is, well, for numbers I know the statement is true. If A times B is equal to A times C, and A is not zero, then B must be equal to C. Another way of writing this down is, if A times B minus A times C is equal to zero, then A times B minus C is equal to zero, so A is equal to zero, which it is not, or B minus C is equal to zero, so B equals C. Now what happens if A, B and C are matrices? You could rewrite the question as follows. A times B minus C is equal to the null matrix. A is not the null matrix. Does it follow that B minus C is equal to the null matrix? In other words, writing B minus C as D, if A times D is equal to the null matrix and A is not the null matrix, does it follow that D is equal to the null matrix? Here, you hopefully already get the feeling that the statement is false. Because you have seen examples of this, the product of two matrices being equal to the null matrix, while none of the matrices itself is equal to the null matrix. So now, you have to go and find a counterexample. There is no general method for this, but the thought that you must be able to find such an example should keep you going. Suppose you don't have a clue. Then try to simplify the question as much as possible. What are the simplest matrices? Try multiplying a 1 times 2 matrix and a 2 times 1 matrix, both non-zero, such that their product is zero. Wait a second. This looks like the inner product of two vectors. Remember, this is zero if the vectors are orthogonal. Here's a simple example. In fact, you are ready now. You found an example of two matrices whose product is zero. But none of the matrices itself is the null matrix. This is a counterexample to the statement from the exercise. But let's push the, push the exercise a little further. Let's try to find an example with 2 times 2 matrices. Start with 1, 1, 1, 1, and try some numbers in D to get the null matrix from the product A times D. You will soon get something like 2, 0, minus 2, 0. A times D is the null matrix, but D is not the null matrix. So, it works. Now let's go back to the original question. Suppose A times B is equal to A times C. Take A is 1, 1, 1, 1. B is the null matrix and C is 2, 0, minus 2, 0. Then you can easily compute A times B, which is the null matrix. And A times C is equal to the null matrix, but B is not equal to C. If you don't like B to be the null matrix, you can take B equal to 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and A and C as before. Then again, A times B is equal to the null matrix, A times C is equal to the null matrix, but B is not equal to C. As you can see, you can find several counterexamples to disprove the original statement. Finally, how do you write the answer to such a question down? The statement is false. Take A equal to 1, 1, 1, 1, B equal to 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and C equal to 2, 0, minus 2, 0. Then A times B and A times C are equal to the null matrix, but obviously B is not equal to C. This may be somewhat disappointing to you. The amount of work you have put into finding the counterexample is not reflected in the length of your answer, as you can see. Well, that's life. As long as your answer is right, 
you are happy and your teacher certainly is too. The important lesson is never let a question defeat you. Just start trying using your common sense as a guide. Relying on the knowledge you gathered from this course, the insight you gained and the skills you trained to find a solution. Now try it yourself. <laughs>